Before we proceed further in this course, in this lecture we will learn how the Angular components and directives are created when its selector is encountered and what happens after that. Now here I am going to take example of a component but the same concepts are true for directives also. So when Angular application runs and when it finds one of the component selectors, it will instantiate a new version of that component class and it will render it in the DOM. For example, here we have this demo component class and for this demo component class the selector is app demo so when we use this selector somewhere in our angular application like here we are using it and when the angular application will run and when it will encounter this selector what it will do is it will instantiate this demo component class and in order to instantiate this demo component class it will call its constructor okay so in order to instantiate a class, no matter it is a component class or a directive class or a normal class, we call its constructor. Now keep in mind that every TypeScript class has a constructor. If the constructor is not defined explicitly, it will get a default parameterless constructor, which then gets called in order to instantiate the class. Okay, so whenever the selector of a component class is encountered, the constructor of that component class is called. Let's see this with an example. Here, I have created a new Angular project called Angular Lifecycle Hook. And in this project, I have one app component. So this app component is going to be our root component. If I go to the HTML file of this app component, in there, we are using a div. Inside that div, we are using another component called demo component. And we also have a button here. Okay, and if I go to the app component class, there we just have a title property. And we have a selector called app root. Now, we also have this demo component. So if I expand this demo component and if I go to the TS file of this demo component, there we have this demo component class with this selector app demo. And then we are using this selector in the app component. And if I go to the HTML file here, for this component, we are only displaying one paragraph. Okay, so if I go to the web page, the application will look something like this. So this paragraph here, which you see, it is being rendered from the demo component and this button element it is defined in the app component let me increase the font size here all right so if i go back to the vs code here we have our app component and in there we are using the selector of demo component now we learned that when this angular application will run and when angular will encounter this selector for the demo component it will instantiate the demo component class it will instantiate this class and in order to instantiate this class, it will call its constructor. So currently we have not defined any constructor for this class explicitly. So by default, it will get a default parameterless constructor. But if we want, we can also specify a constructor explicitly. For that, we just need to type the constructor keyword and use a parenthesis on that. And then inside the curly braces, we can write some logic which we want to execute when this constructor is called. For now, I will simply go ahead and I will write a console.log statement and in there I will say demo component constructor called. So here in the app component, when the selector will be encountered, it will call the constructor of the component class. So basically, it will call this constructor and in the developer console, this message will be logged. And same is true for app component also. So we are using the selector of this app component in the index.html file. So there also when the Angular will see this app root selector, it will call the constructor of this app component class. So if you want, we can also add a constructor here. And here also I will add a console.log statement. And there I will say app component constructor called. So in this case, first the app component constructor will be called that means first the app component will be initialized and after the app component is initialized after that only this demo component will be initialized so let's see this in action let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's open developer console here and let's go to the console tab let me clear everything here and let me reload the page one more time okay so first you will see app component constructor called because in the index.html file, we are also using the selector of app component, which is app root. So first, the constructor of app component will be called. 
and once it is instantiated and rendered then only the constructor of the demo component will be called because this demo component is basically a child component for this app component so first the app component will be initialized and after that only the demo component will be initialized and whenever a component is initialized its constructor gets called here we have used the selector for the demo component only once so if i go to app component.html there we have used the selector of the demo component only once that's why only one instance of demo component will be created and that constructor will be called only once but if i go ahead and if i use this selector multiple times let's say i'm going to use it three times in that case for each selector an instance of that component will be created in this example for each app demo selector the instance of demo component will be created so here we have used it three times that means three instances of the demo component will be created so that means this constructor will be called three times so if i go to the web page and if we reload the web page you will first see that app component constructor called it is logged only once because we are using the selector of this app component only once in the index.html file and then you will see this demo component constructor called three times because we are using the selector of this demo component three times that means three instances of this demo component class will be created i hope this point is clear so let's go ahead and let's remove these two selectors we only want to call this app demo class once so we will only use the selector of that class one time now by the time a constructor is called none of its input properties are updated and available to use let's understand this with an example so let's go to demo component class and in there let's create few properties so i'll create one title property it is going to be of type string and let's say title is demo component then let's also create another property called message and it is also going to be of type string and to this i'll go ahead and i will assign hello now i want to make this message property as input property for that i will use this input decorator on that property and in order to use this input decorator we also need to import it from angular slash co now let's go ahead and let's try to log this title property and this message property when this constructor is called for that let's go ahead and let's use this console.log statement and in there let's log this dot title and here let's log this dot message now keep in mind that this message is an input property it is not a normal property it is an input property so we can bind this message property in our parent class so if i go to the parent class in this case the parent class is app component class there if i want i can bind that message property because it is an input property and to this i can assign a value from the parent component so for now i will simply go ahead and i will assign some string value from the parent component for that within the double quotes i will use a set of single quotes and in there i will simply say hello world okay so what we expect is when this demo component will be rendered in the web page at that time this message should log hello world because that's what we are initializing it from our parent component so with this let's save the changes and let's go to the web page and here you will notice that when the demo component is rendered in the web page and when its constructor is called first it logged this message demo component constructor called then it is logging the value stored in the title property which is demo component and then it is logging the value stored in the message property and for the message property it is logging that value which we initially assigned it with so here we assign this message property with this value hello so this value is being logged when we are logging this message property in the constructor but it is not logging the value which we are actually passing from the parent component which is hello world in this case okay so keep in mind that the input properties are not updated with the value which we are passing for it from the parent component by doing the property binding by the time the constructor is called so by the time the constructor is called the input properties are not updated 
they are only initialized with their initial value. Projected contents are also not available by the time the constructor of a component is called. Now we talked about content projection in our last lecture. So basically here if you notice we have this demo component and for this demo component the view template has one h2 element, one paragraph element and in between that we are using this ng content element of angular. So this ng content element will be replaced by the content which the parent component will pass for this ng content. So when we use this app demo selector somewhere in the angular application like we are doing here in between the opening and closing app demo selector we are specifying some html content so this html content will replace this ng content in the component so here we are projecting content from the parent component to the child component where this ng content will be replaced by that projected content so by the time this constructor of the component class gets called by that time the projected content is not available in order to replace this ng content and once the component is removed from the dom we can say that the component is destroyed so we can say that when the constructor of a component is called by that time the component class is only created and its properties are initialized nothing else happened by that time no input properties are updated view of that component is not yet rendered and its child components are also not created and the same concept holds true for directive class also so once a new component class is instantiated and before the component is destroyed it goes through different phases in this creation process when the angular application starts it first creates and render the root component the root component is the app component then it creates and renders the children and their children component in this way it forms a tree of components now once angular loads the component it starts the process of rendering the view to do that it needs to check the input properties of the component it needs to evaluate the data binding and expressions and it also needs to render and project the content if required angular then also removes the component from the dom if the component is no longer needed and angular lets us know when this event happens using angular lifecycle hook and we can hook into these phases by implementing some methods which angular will call if they are present in the component class and these methods are called as angular lifecycle hooks so the angular lifecycle hooks are the methods that angular invokes on a directive or a component when it creates changes or destroys that component or that directive and these lifecycle hooks are ng on changes ng on init ng do check ng after content in it ng after content checked ng after view in it ng after view checked and ng destroy and we are going to talk about each of these life cycle hooks one by one in great detail in our coming lectures this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day